Thank you very much, Eunice, and, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us today in this webinar. So thank you for the presentation. I think we can we can kick off the session now. As, as Eunice introduced me, my name is Beltran Atienza, and I'm an international growth consultant at Google. I am normally based out of Dublin, uh, although I am currently in Madrid, because since COVID, we we been all been we are all delocalized but uh, my focus markets are Spain and Portugal so my work at Google is advising retail companies from Spain and Portugal in their international expansion these are some of the clients that I normally work with just so you can get an idea of the companies that I engage with in in my in on a on a daily basis, as you can see, there is three segments that I that I normally explore. First, there is home and furniture, equipment and decor, marketplaces among them Dot, which I believe most of you will know, and also one of my most important domains is fashion and apparel, because being being uh, Spain, my focus market, along with Portugal, you might imagine that the Spanish retail brands are super powerful, very engaged with e-commerce. So from Google, we try to support them as much as possible. Uh, uh, first of all, and, and before we dive deeper into this session, I would like to, to remind you that everyone can ask any questions at any point through the chat. We kindly ask you to remain muted because there's too many people and this can be a little bit messy, but please ask as many questions as you want. We will probably tackle them at the end so, so we, can, we can run smoothly and with the flow of the presentation. But uh, do not worry, I, I'll be paying attention to the chat and everything, no, no question will be left unanswered, okay? uh let, let, let's let's get on with it if, if if it's okay with everyone so what we will be covering today is the intro that we've already done but the core of the session will be explaining why we think it's important for business owners to engage in online operations outside their domestic market so the whys that we'll try to explain is why now, why online, why export, and why with Google? Why we think Google is the best-in-class partner for you to accompany you during your international expansion. Then, during the second section, we will cover how can you do this. I'll explain the methodology that we uh, adopt with our clients, and also I'll show the tools that we have at your disposal in case you want to peruse or to browse on the internet and build your own analysis. At the end, we will have 15 or 20 minutes allocated for questions, so do not worry. There will be time for everything. Let's get on with it. Now, what I would like to do is get to know you a little bit more because these sessions that we are forced. I think Isabel is back with us now. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm, no? I'm back with you and I'm very sorry for these technical uh, problems. Uh, I know you've already started. I just uh, 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 will introduce you. So please go ahead with, with your presentation. We'll have the opportunity. Just let me say that the participants are, feel free to make the questions on the public, public chat, as you were saying, and then you, for sure, as we, you told us, you'll be able to answer the questions during the presentation and in the, in the end. So I'm sorry once again for these technical problems in the in the beginning. And please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you, Valtran. No, of course, we were just about to start. So first of all, what I would like to do is to get to know you a little bit better so I can shape my message to you. Uh, I'm about to launch a poll now. I will do it uh, several times along the, during this session. So what I would do is ask you now, you see my first question for you now would be, what's your industry sector of activity? 
So I'll offer for you some answers that I'm drafting now. And you ha you'll have the opportunity to answer in a minute. One second, so we can we can all get to know each other. There you go. You should see my poll now. Well, it seems like there is a lot of people from other industries. Can you please, those who answer other, uh, briefly uh, type in the chat, what industries are you in? Just so I can get an idea. Okay, food supplements, okay, wine, automotive. Okay. Got it. Well, it seems like most of you are in, in retail anyway, which is my field of expertise. So that's perfectly fine. A lot of wine, a lot of textile. Perfect. Amazing. Software development. Great, great. A lot of engagement. I like it. So another, another another question that I'll ask, what's the size of your company? And let, let me offer for you options again. Let's see how it goes with this one. How big is your company? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't think you can see the results, but I speak them out for you because as I'm the presenter, I'm the only one seeing the results. But what I'm seeing now is that uh, more than one third of the audience works or runs a company with less than 10 people. Then 20% is between 10 and 50 people, and 17% so far works at a company larger than 50 people okay so mostly small and medium sized companies perfect you are the real heroes that uh, that takes a lot of courage especially these days amazing perfect so let's move to the to the next poll do you do you currently export yes or no do you uh, are you already selling services or goods outside of portugal love it so most of you do okay okay that's that's great so i don't need i don't need to convince you that you already export you know how important it is and how relevant so more than 60% of the people already export. Great. Let's, sorry, sorry if I'm being quick, but uh, there, we're running a little bit late. So I'll move to the last poll, which is, do you actually currently sell online? Yes or no? Yes. Seems like we have a split room in this one. 50% of the people do export and the other half does not export yet. That, that, sorry, that's not sell online. That was the, the current question. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So I get a better idea. Most of you, of you are in retail, small and medium companies already exporting, but not necessarily selling online. That, that, is, that is perfect. Thank you so much. And I think we can we can move on now. Perfect. 
So the whys. Why do we think that uh, the moment is now that you have to go online outside of Portugal and with with no further ado, we'll go again to the poll and I'll ask you if any of you know who who coined this quote. I'll I'll, I'll give you options again. There you go. Who, who coined this sentence? Let's see how familiar are you with it. There are decades when nothing happens, and then there are weeks where decades happen, which is exactly what just happened in e-commerce this year, as you might be aware of. <laughs> the, we, we seem to have a split room in here as well. A lot of people saying Steve Jobs. Also, 13 people think it's Bill Gates. 10 people think it's Lenin. And four people think it's Zuckerberg. Well, actually, the, the, so, Tiago, Tiago is asking, what is the question? The question is, who coined this quote? There are decades where not happens and then there are weeks where decades happen and the, the answer was uh, Lenin actually I I don't think Lenin is much quoted at Google but in, in this case this quote is is perfect for this year I don't think Lenin had in mind e-commerce but as you probably know uh, this year has been a game changer for e-commerce this 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 quote perfectly applies to this year in e-commerce because in the three months going from um, April to June, e-commerce penetration at all across the board in, in most of the countries has actually increased by, by more than the previous five years. So we have actually advanced five years in 10 weeks, which is unparalleled and unprecedented in commerce with that now is the right moment to go online if you weren't online before so because e-commerce is really booming and here here you can see another example of how how fast changes happen if you look at the left side of green you'll see a picture of the fifth avenue at the beginning of the 20th century you'll see that there you have to make an effort to spot a car because cars were a new innovation, they were just launched, and there is only one car. Whereas 13 years later, in the side of the screen, you'll see that the effort you have to make it to spot the horse, because uh, Henry Ford had already introduced the Model T, so cars were already widely available, and technology had changed the times that uh, people were living. And that is what it's happening now. E-commerce is booming and growing at such a pace that everybody has to stay on the lookout because the changes that are happening now will define the moment, especially in business, which is the most relevant field that has gathered you all today here. Uh, we, we, the, 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 the change that we are witnessing now will shape the times going forward, okay? So let's let's, Take a pause again and make another poll so you can guess how long did it take for Hilton to go international? I'll give you options here. So we can compare Hilton with new world companies that I uh, will review in a moment. So how long did you think in years took Hilton to open their first hotel outside the US? You know, Hilton is a hotel brand that was firstly founded in the US in 1919. 
and uh, they open their first hotel in Puerto Rico. That's the hint that I can give you. A lot of people already answer. Most of the room going for 30 years. A lot of people also think 15 years is the right answer, but um, yeah, we, we're still waiting for some people to answer. Okay, we already have 50 answers and you were right. The right answer is 30 years. That's what it took Hilton to open their first hotel in Puerto Rico. However, if we look at Airbnb, you, you can see the contrast here between Airbnb and Hilton and how different are these two companies because for Airbnb, it only took one year to move operations outside the US outside the US and only eight years to expand to more than 90 countries. That is that is amazing also considering that uh, both companies, Airbnb and Hilton, they kind of compete in the same market, which is uh, accommodation or travel or and tourism, depending on how you want to look at it. But it's amazing and it is a good example of how the times are changing because now more than ever companies are becoming asset light, which is the case not only of Airbnb, but of other companies like Uber, which is the world's biggest transportation company, and it owns no fleet, Airbnb, we've already discussed, and Alibaba, which is the world's most valuable retailer, and it stores no stock. It only uh, connects uh, supply with demand, and this is super Super important because this is the common feature of all these new companies that are proliferating now. We are living through the times of marketplaces at platforms, and there is great, great power and great strength and opportunity in business in adopting such models. So here you can see that uh, these companies have done so and have been very, very successful by doing so. Also, another important thing that we, we need to consider going forward and what we, we think at Google, that is, is this is the right moment to go online, is because the amount of connected population is increasing more than ever before. Now in 2020, we already have more than half of the population connected to the internet. So out of 7.6 billion people, almost 4 billion people is connected, but not only only that going forward in five year time span, we think that uh, 400 million people more will be connected. So the percentage of connected population over total population will only increase. That is, that is uh, in broad strokes, the landscape that we will be facing going forward. And as a business owner, this is super important to understand because the connected population is really, it, it has become your target addressable market. I, I, absol I am absolutely aware because I work with many of the largest retailers at Google. And it's not always easy to go overseas. We'll tackle on that uh, later on because many of you might be exporting goods and not services that it's much more difficult. But you need to keep in mind, and we will also uh, discuss it later, that uh, the world has become borderless. And nowadays, with improved logistics, there is there is clients, and I, I know some of them because I work with them, who are able to send goods to Australia or even Japan and compete in price with local players. So that is, that is a, a game changer because it means that the market is no longer local, it's becoming global, okay? Perfect. So, in line with this, it is also important to know that uh, when we say connected population, we not only talk about one single device. On average, people have 6.7 devices. So all in all, also consider individual plus business devices. Currently, there is more than 50 billion connected devices. And this is important because as we will see later on, the smartphones are the main source of online traffic now. This is 
important for you to keep in mind because when you plan your operations, you have to keep in mind that in mature markets, the threshold that we are seeing now is that almost between 60 and 70% of the purchases are made through a smartphone, okay? We've already discussed this. The world is becoming borderless. The, the, it is increasingly, the borders are increasingly blurry. There is many companies who have successfully managed to go overseas and, and run operations in many countries. As we discussed, platforms and marketplaces are in, a, a, are in an advantage position to do so because they don't have to open branches in, in their new markets. They, they only have to establish a relationship with local retailers and local fulfillment centers and warehouses. So the world is becoming borderless and the client, the, the consumers are, what, what we are seeing at Google is that consumers are no longer, if, if they ever did so, minding where is the company from. That is no longer important. And we know this because we run service recurrently and we found out that for instance, in the UK, 76% of the consumers didn't know that a Asos.com, which is one of the biggest marketplaces on earth, was from the UK. So 76% of the people didn't know it was from the UK. That is what we mean when we say the world is becoming borderless because this is no longer important. Also, 95% not only don't know, but don't care either. So the li likelihood of buying regardless, irrespective of the nationality of the company is much, much higher now. If we look at cross-border e-commerce, the forecast that we are, uh, that we, the, 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 the latest forecast says that uh, ex-border commerce is expected to double if we compare to 2018 numbers by 2022, that is in two years probably. This is a pre-COVID stat, so probably now it's even faster. Again, in this same line, we think that going online is super important because the numbers that we are seeing in our retailers point to a five times faster growth in online commerce than when compared to in-store retail. So if you want to ride the faster wave now, you have to go online. You, you, most of you are already there, but it is important to streamline operations because you'll see that there is many, uh, um, when we look at the customer journey, it, it is important to understand the touch point that the customer goes, goes through when purchasing in your website. That is super important because we see uh, high rates of dropout, for instance, when the website is not properly loaded, when delivery fees are added on top of the, the price of the product at the end, the, when the when there when there is no option to pay through PayPal, that that kind of things uh, need to be handled from the very beginning. Uh, another stat that I'd like to share with you: why it's important to advertise online? Because if we look at the progression of advertising in the last seventy years, you'll see that in 1950, newspaper accounted for more than fifty percent, whereas now is less than 10%. If you look at the top right corner, you will see that internet online advertising is eating the larger part of the pie at a faster faster pace. Uh, it is only at increasing faster pace. It is currently at about 30, 35%, and it is only increasing because there is many advantages for you as business owners to advertise online. First of all, reach. We've already discussed how big is the market online. Then measurement. Everything you you invest online, you can track and you can understand the return on your investment. Then flexibility. There is there is the opportunity to do A-B testing. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this concept, but many, many advertisers and retailers like you, what they do is they use different type of ads and they they test them for a couple of weeks and then they see the results and going forward, they only use the one that has obtained more results. That is something that you can do online 
But uh, given the cost of offline advertising, nobody does that offline, right? Because it would be a little weird to run different type of ads on TV and then only go with the most popular one. Although some some clients are doing so lately. Also, the cost in online, you only pay for the clicks you get. That is super important because in traditional advertising, you pay irrespective of the client paying attention to your ad or not. Segmentation is also important because we'll touch on this later, but Google has a lot of signals. So we are able to discriminate between different type of customers, which is something that uh, you cannot do or, or, or not with this level of granularity with traditional advertising. That is, you can choose to advertise in one newspaper and not another or, or in this TV channel and like this other one, but this is segmentation only in broad strokes. Whereas at Google or social media, you're able to segmentate the market with a much, much higher and deeper level of granularity. So here, let's go back to the polls again. I would like you to, to guess how many people use worldwide Google products. Let, let's see how close you get to the real answer. Let me give you options again. Beltran, while we are waiting for the answers, this, yeah. question, this question of advertising and digital marketing, do you think that companies uh, are already prepared and already understand the importance of the advertising and digital marketing question? Well, mm, not all of them, but I would say that um, most of you are probably aware of this. But what we are seeing is that normally legacy clients, clients that have advertised in other channels for a long time, they struggle to understand it. But uh, with time, they are they are bending and leaning towards online because they realize that, especially what they they value a lot and what they appreciate a lot, is the possibility to be flexible and to to measure the return on their investment. That that is super important. And for instance, I remember when I joined Google, one of the cases that uh, that we studied and we tried to copy for Spain was the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is a good example of online advertising because there was a brand, this is public, that, that's why I can share this. There, there is a brand called Doritos. It is a snack, you probably have heard of it. And Doritos was uh, planning to uh, buy an advertising slot during the Super Bowl. And they what they did is test different ads three months in advance. Mm -hmm. And during the Super Bowl game break, they only use the one which was showing higher levels of engagement. So they had great success with that ad. And that is something that they only could do because they tested before online, so they knew. And that, so that, that, is, that is the strength and the power of online advertising. So, so going back to the poll, it seems like we already have the answers. 26% of the people think it's 1 billion. Only 1% 1 answer 500 million. 24 people said 3 billion and five people 750 million. Well, uh, you were kind of close. I would say that the actual answer is that Google currently runs and operates 10 properties with more than 1 billion users each. And if you guys are wondering what are these properties, I have them listed here for you. I would never ask you to say to list them because I, most of the time myself, I even forget two or three of them. But it's Google Search, Google Chrome, Google Maps, Android, the Play Store, Gmail, YouTube, Google Photos, Google Drive, and Google Translate. So as you can see, Google has a lot of signals. Google is, is collecting data uh, from all of us. So when advertisers come to us, we can offer them a very holistic and well-rounded uh, consumer landscape, right? So this is super important because we are always focusing on becoming a trusted advisor for businesses. So we try to make it worthy for you to invest through Google. If we look at the export, what we are seeing in, in most of the markets, 
is that uh, as we said before uh, the nationality the origin of the business is no longer important Right. You can see here top ten countries of e uh, the, the 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 top ten countries where retail has the highest share of e-commerce. We can see that fifty percent of Western Europeans are buying digital cross border now. That this is pre-COVID, so the data is actually higher now. But I only wanted to show these insights to you because I think it's important for you to know that uh, international markets are not as far and difficult to tackle and to target as you might think we have a lot of businesses not necessarily big businesses no i'm not talking about Zara or mango here i'm talking about startups that were founded seven eight years even two years ago that are currently operating in dozens of countries so another poll how many dresses searches were there in the last year in portugal so what i'm asking here is how many people do you think search for address in portugal last year so let me give you options again i'll say sorry because i have to improvise this but i think it's it is good start for you to make a guess and understand how powerful is online nowadays okay there you go pick options how many searches were there in the Google search engine last year, but only in Portugal? We, t we are only talking here about Portugal. So, so far, most people seem to be thinking that 6 million is the right answer. We already have 42 answers responses out of 72 people okay so i think we can go ahead now the right answer it is 10 million searches in portugal last year for dresses that seems that that might seem to some of you like a lot another of you might think that it's not much but when we compare with 100 million in in spain almost 100 with 220 in brazil with seven more than sorry sorry for that i get a sorry one sec i get a problem with my screen one second so more than 700 million in the top uh, european countries Sorry, you don't, you don't see my, you no longer see my screen, right? Let me share again, because I put to sleep my screen by mistake. One second. I was saying that more than, you see my screen now. I, I believe if not, please let me know. I was saying that uh, when we look at Portugal compared to other markets, we see that, for instance, the US is more than 86 times larger than Portugal. That gives you an idea of how important it is for you to export because the, the, the opportunity that lies ahead is super, super important. I, I, I'm seeing in the chat that you, you didn't listen to me. Do you hear me, Isabel? Uh, yes, I can, I can hear you, but I think most of the participants yes. are not uh, hearing you now. Uh, you can just shut down and open your mic again. Yes, I'm fine. Okay. Can you can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes, I think it's everybody. Okay. It's okay. Perfect. Now? Perfect. Okay. It's, it's okay now. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Thank I, you both. I prom yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Promise not to not to mess up with my screen again. So e-commerce. We were saying before e-commerce uh, when we were referring to the lending board e-commerce high skyrocketed during the recent crisis and that is a great example us we always do it as a leading indicator because normally what happened in the us it indicated in spain or in europe and later on in, in other less mature countries so here what you can see is that in 10 weeks we have advanced as much as in the previous five years this is super important for you to keep in mind similarly if we look at the biggest market in Europe, we see that uh, during Q1, which was not even 
COVID crisis because the huge boom came with the COVID crisis. But even during Q1, we were, we were growing in terms of e-commerce at the same pace as peak season. You know, for you to know, uh, when we say peak season, we refer to the period of the year going from Black Friday to Christmas. That is normally what we refer when we say peak season. So even in Q1, we were rapidly growing, but then COVID arrived, and that was that was like the, a game changer. That was when we the, the e-commerce really coded. And that's the slide of this section is uh, important because I think for Portuguese business owners or decision makers, it is important to know that half of the shoppers say that they use Google before buying something new. This is, this is from a survey that we ran last year focused on Portugal. The other insights were global, but this is only Portugal. Over two thirds of shoppers use Google to research a purchase. They plan to make in store. So even if they make the purchase in store, they research online. And most shoppers have used in the past week, 86% of the shoppers had used in the past week Google for you to understand the reach that Google has, okay? So everything, I hope everything is clear so so far. We, we, we are gonna move now to the second section. Sorry, because I'm going a little bit fast, but yes, this presentation will be delivered to you in PDF format, so no need to take notes, and if everyone thinks that I'm going too fast, do not worry, we will share it with you. All the information here is compliant and uh, safe, to, safe to serve externally, okay? Let's look at some insights now to, to, to kick off this section. 60% of exporters say that they lack access to relevant market information. That is something that we can help you with at Google because we do have that information. 83% of exporters say that they lack know-how on overcoming operational hurdles. We can help you with that as well. There is a tool called Market Finder that we will touch on later on, and that has information also, an advisory around four pillars that is normally the most common operational hurdles that our clients deal with. Also, the, we already this before 82 percent of shoppers are more likely to buy if, if promotional material is in their own language this is super super important all the time we run into complaints from from our advertisers because they think that localizing their digital assets is, is an extra effort that not always pays off our answer from google it is always the same localize as much as you can because the the conversion ratios greatly increase when you localize your digital assets. Just for you to give you an idea, in the countries in Europe that uh, uh, people are more used to browsing online in English, even I'm, I'm I'm speaking about the Nordic countries that people normally think that they everyone in the Nordic countries speak English. Well, not even 10% of the population re research products in English in the Nordic countries. So imagine how low is that figure in Spain or Italy, uh, which are the countries in, in Western Europe that are least likely to research in English, okay? So super important, localize your assets. Decide where to go. Well, we, we, we we also discussed this before. Mobile search is super important in 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 mature markets. Yeah, this is only for mattresses. This is an example that we published last year at Google. But in general, we are seeing the level of online traffic approaching seventy percent of total online traffic. So super important to have responsive websites. Sorry, but there is someone has the mic open because there is a sound that keeps coming. I, it's a little annoying. But yeah, it is stopped now. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm sorry. This is the type of analysis that you will be able to find in Market Finder, which is the Google tool at your disposal to explore markets. We'll, we'll touch more on this later on. Important steps. This is, this is the operational pillars that we look at with our clients. Localization, payments, it's super important to understand what are, what are the preferred payment options in each country. Customer care, a lot of 
it depends on the nature of your activity, but a, a lot of clients have a hard time when dealing with customer care because, again, this is the reason for localizing because clients will be dealt with in their local language. Logistics, super important as well. Uh, in these days, there is a lot of uh, carriers that offer very competitive uh, rates. And in, in case you guys need a partner referral, we can help with that also at Google. And then talent recruitment, you probably know more than that. That is the human capital is the most important pillar always, right? Not something particular about e-commerce. These, these are also the fields that we help companies with. I won't stop too long here. Here, so what we are going to do now is look at the steps that we take with clients in approaching an international strategy. Okay. This, this question of the steps, Beltran, is very important. So I will uh, ask you uh, what will be your most important advice for companies who are trying to promote their business online right now. The right steps, I think it's the subject of your next part of your presentation. Yes. Yeah, so th thank you for the question, Isabel. We'll, we'll touch on this right now, but my my first insight would be uh, also in light of my experience with all si all type of businesses is to plan your op operations as if you were going to become global That from the very beginning. That is super important because a lot of the times, of course, the big retailers already have global operations, but what I see a lot of the times is that companies that were humbled in the beginning and were planning to target niche markets, when they try to scale, they face high roadblocks because they didn't plan their technological infrastructure from the very beginning as if they, wanna, they, they were going to become global. So it's super, super important from, from, from the business plan stage to plan as if you were gonna be international. So, um i'm talking about uh, including international payment options i'm talking about uh being able to quickly and and in an agile manner to translate content to different languages that kind of things is super important because then if you decide to go later on it's going to be much more difficult i've seen clients that have to migrate their entire e-commerce platform to another platform because they couldn't handle the amount of orders that they were handling during e-commerce, sorry, during COVID crisis. So it's super important. Allow yourself to grow. That is my that is my main advice for you. So if we, look, if we look at the steps, first of all, of course, decide where to go. This is the analytical stage, then the operations, get everything ready, and then the piece of advice that I already, already gave you. Prepare to be global, OK? So there is opportunities outside your domestic market, no matter what stage are you currently in. We work with clients that are new to export, also some others that are not new, as you, that most of you are not new to export, but there is opportunity lying ahead of you in different markets. And even we work with clients like uh, in, uh, the X Group uh, or Mango or, or, or Toad, the jeweler, that uh, is already in a lot of markets, more than 50 markets normally, but uh, there is still a lot of untapped potential for them lying in, in those markets. So it is important to keep this in mind. So when, when we work with a client, normally in, in our team at Google, uh, I, we only work with the largest customers at Google. But uh, I think the approach that we take could be replicated. You, you, you guys could replicate this this angle because I think the methodology is uh, could be used for you as well and and might be of interest for you. So first of all, what we do is identify the opportunity, and for that we first of all assess demand, measure as number of searches in a particular niche against competition. Okay, then what we do is look at, at a more granular level. So we, we look 
not only at demand and searches, but we look at the number of players, the concentration of those players, because normally in the markets that there is a highest level of concentration is more difficult to enter. So that kind of issues that you are probably familiar with. Then the operational side of the business that we've already discussed, and last but not least, tracking the performance. That is paramount for improving. Tracking everything, you know that uh, no matter what, what uh, interface, either it's Google or Facebook, or any other social media, there is always for you to track your performance. And it is very important to be on top of it, to know where, where is the head for improve, the, the headroom for improvement. It is important as well to understand the customer journey. Uh, first of all, there is searches, then there is clicks, and there is conversions. And uh, if you are facing problems along this journey, you need to know where lies the problem because some companies show a lot of impressions, but then they do not get the clicks or, or they do not make as many conversions as they expect. And that is probably for different reasons in each step. So it is important to know that the online customer journey has these three different stages in order to identify what is the roadblock. So when we work with clients, as I said before, we analyze macro conditions, uh, we analyze the number of searches, we confer a market based on population, connected population, number of devices per person, purchasing uh, power in each market. That is the kind of thing that we, we analyze in a preliminary stage. Then we understand market dynamics, competition, seasonality. That is also very important, especially in retail, because as you know, not every month is the same, uh, peak season, in what we are seeing at Google is that peak season currently accounts for up to 40% of yearly sales. That is a lot if you think about it because you concentrate all your sales in two or three months. And that is important to keep in mind also from an operational standpoint. And then excellence in, in execution is key. We, we In the beginning of the presentation, we were discussing that being able to handle returns, being able to, to interact with your customer in their local language, uh, being transparent with the delivery fees, with the, time, with the time it takes to deliver the product to the client, that is super, super important. And what we normally see is that a successful client are, are normally, not all, yeah, I would say normally, not those who arrive earlier to the market, but those who master execution. And, and the best example of it is probably Amazon, right? That has absolutely revolutionized the way commerce is conducted nowadays because of this. It's not because Amazon is super powerful technologically, because it is, of course, but their main strength is their customer focus. They are, they are super clear that customer is their first, second, and third uh, important thing. So they focus on execution, and they are really, really good at it. And that's the reason for this, for their success. And measurement and optimization, we already discussed. Uh, in Google, you can track your performance through Google AdWords. And that is important because uh, normally there is a lot of improvement, especially when you begin exporting online. And the AdWords interface recommends automatically some improvements that you can adopt and greatly increase your, your conversions that normally is your focus from the very beginning. So here, I'd like to share with you a couple of real examples. I can share them because it's public. All the information has already been uh, um, broadcasted in, 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 outlet, in media outlets. So here, this is a client that I, I have in Spain. This is trading, it's a retailer like many of you. And this is a great, great success example because this is a company not over 10 years old from a very small town in Catalonia. Last year, they closed with almost 200 million in sales, out of which 84% came from international market. And that is, that is incredible if you think about it because it is only 10 years 10 years old and is already selling in more than 120 countries. And th th there is many reasons for this, but one thing that I would like to highlight to you is their translation offering. Thanks to the Google 
Cloud Translate API, they were able to translate more than 100 million SKU or product pages to 18 languages. And that has proved to be a key success factor for them because offering their content in the local language, this is one of the examples that I was talking about before, is paramount for their success. Another example that I'd like to show you is a better known company, Mango, the Spanish retailer. They, they have always been really good with e-commerce, but since COVID arrived, they are much better now because they moved their their offline businesses or part of it because they had to shut down their stores. They move it online. So they double down on online advertising. And as a result, they increased plus 20% of the e sessions. They achieved almost well, 900,000 new clients, which means plus 50% year on year online sales. So that, that is incredible. And, and Mango is one of the most advanced companies that we work with in in terms of e-commerce they they are super engaged with e-commerce they understand the value of e-commerce and they are planning to have 30 percent of the of their total sales in e-commerce by 2021 by next year so here you have a couple of great examples let's move to the google solutions because we are already approaching the end of the session sorry if i'm being too fast but i i think it's important to cover everything so you guys get to know and get, get, get to have a glimpse, at least, of the solutions that are at your disposal for you to use and explore new market. There is this tool that we have at Google called Market Finder. You can all access it through, through that URL. And in that tool, what you can find, what, what you can do is find new opportunities, plan your operations, and market your business, okay? So many, many of the insights and information that we use for our customers is already available for you through this tool. So when finding new opportunities, what, what, what the tool asks you to do is input your website. Through this, the algorithm automatically detects the categories that you are trading. So in this case, uh, right on toys, mountain bikes, uh, cycling. In case there is something missing, you'll have the option to include it. So the analysis that will be provided to you in later stage, in, in a later stage, is more relevant to you. Okay. So considering this input, the analysis, what what it does is recommend you market based on macro, demand, and competition criteria. Okay. In this case, US, Germany, and the United Kingdom. What you what you have to keep in mind is that normally at a high level analysis, the most important thing is the market size. So that is why United States, Germany, and United Kingdom show on top. If you complete your profile here through the tool, you'll have the option to deep dive in these markets and see other insights. As here, you, you, you can see here an example. Many of the service and many of the information that we develop with our largest clients, we then put it available for everyone through this tool. So I think if you guys are curious about export and about international market, this is a great resource for you to explore and to play with. So one stop here because you guys already know what is this? We already discussed that uh, when we're talking about macro, we look at different indicators like the global ease of doing business from the World Bank, then Google Ads competitiveness, what we do normally. When we assess competition, what we do is think of, think, think of CPCs. That is the level of prices in terms of e-commerce. So the higher the CPC is, normally, the as strong as the competition is uh, that that is in broad strokes but because then there is other metrics such as app def app def for instance is the number of ads that a customer is shown when they input any random search okay so for instance if i look up uh, restaurants in madrid if I get seven ads, that is the app depth of that query, seven ads. And that is also important for assessing competition. I'm only explaining this because probably Market Finder is one of the metrics that it uses to assess competition as well. And then uh, the third stage, again, is the operations. I think there will be another session provided to you by another Google consultant about operations. So I won't touch on this anymore, but you already know that these are the pillars that we can 
considered important in order to export any services or goods. Payments, market your business. So that, that is what I was explaining before, the, the kind of service, articles, studies that we develop on a daily basis. We'd like to share with you because I think this is relevant for you, especially when you're approaching e-commerce or export e-commerce for the first time. Trends, uh, the, the, you probably are familiar with Google Trends, so they're in Market Finder based on Google Trends data that you can explore as well. Perfect. Uh, this is an overview of, of Market Finder. We are about to wrap up here. Just I'd like to present you another tool that we have briefly touched on during this session, but I, I wanted to highlight it for you here because I think it's it's important. We we said during when I was presenting the uh, trading case that one of the key success factors for them was being able to translate their content to many different local languages. This is the Google tool that they use for that. In back in back in the days, trading decided to host all their content in the Google Cloud. That allowed them to use the Google Cloud Translate API to translate all their content. So as a result, they can translate to almost any language. There is more than 100 languages, as you can see there. The accuracy of language, the, the accuracy of the translation, it is normally, and I'm speaking from my experience here, it is normally higher than you might expect. So it, it is actual real good translation. It is almost 90% 90 as good as a human translation. It is super scalable because uh, uh, with the new version, you can do batch translation. So you can input uh, CSV files and it can translate the whole batch in a, in, a, in, in a matter of seconds. And this is a super powerful tool for you because it is the cost of it is almost negligible. I think the cost is like $20 per million characters. So it's really, really a cheap option in case you guys are facing the translating problems, okay? So feel free to ask in case you have any question. And guys, I can put you in contact with the appropriate team or I can even forward you further information if you guys are interested in this. I'm only highlighting this because in my daily work, I see that translating problems and issues, it is a very, very common roadblock for retailers. So please, please feel free to use this one. And with this, we have arrived to the ending of this session. I, I hope it was not too dense. Uh, please, in case you guys have any, any questions, this is the appropriate time. I sorry because I wasn't paying a lot of attention to the chat, but if there is questions, I'd like to take them now. Uh, Isabel, I don't know if you're aware oh, of any sure, questions we'll that have, I missed. We'll have some questions. Uh, thank okay. you for your presentation. It was uh, uh, very useful information about how to choose a market, the importance of the translation. And you said that you said that um, uh, it doesn't matter how what your business is about. Uh, export is the answer. But we are living now in difficult times. Uh, what do you think are the main changes that the pandemic contest brought to companies, online business? Uh, and what can we expect in the next months? We saw that many online business grow a lot during these uh, last months, but it mm. is a difficult context. Uh, how you think uh, companies should deal with that, and that's what, which are the most important challenges in this context? Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course, thank you. Thank you for the question, Isabel. So it is indeed a difficult times, but I think export is rather the solution, more the solution than the, the, the problem, because what we are seeing with our clients is that many of them are seeing export in international markets as a way to recover their business, because their domestic market is much more damaged than international markets and that is the case of many especially spanish companies because as you all you all know spain has been one of the the worst places during the covid in terms of number of people getting infected so spanish retailers found that export was a great way 
to grow their top line revenue. So mm -hmm. international markets are recovering much faster than the Spanish and Portuguese markets. So, so that is the first thing. Then the macro trend that we are seeing is e-commerce getting bigger and bigger. Before, before COVID, we were talking about levels of 15 to 20% of retail sales on average when compared to total sales, right? Mm -hmm. Currently, we are at, at about 25%. And we think that next year, on average in Spain, we will get to 28-29% of uh, e-commerce sales over total retail sales. So it is super, that is another super important trend to, to keep in mind. So I would say COVID is, is a challenge. It is definitely a challenge. But also, um, now that peak season is approaching, it is important that there is a lot of people who still fear to go shop in store. That mm -hmm. is the case, especially in, in some countries in Europe and in Latin America, for sure. So it is important to offer an equivalent value proposition online, right? Because those customers... Mm -hmm. ...their purchases during pixies and they would like equivalent uh, conditions for their purchase. I'm talking about pricing, first of all, I'm talking about delivery, and I'm talking about customer care, okay? So now that uh, the experience in the stores, in the physical stores is not as good as it used to be, it is very important to be mindful of these, these uh, purchase drivers online and be able to put together a value proposition that attract all those customers that are not willing to go back to the stores just yet, okay? For sure. We have another question from Martin Muniz. Uh, he's asking us, for you, for your experience, what is the more important in e-commerce, the brand mm. or the origin? Um, when you say origin, I guess you're talking about the nationality of the company, right? If, if I'm mistaken, please correct me. But um, what we see at Google is that uh, the origin is is decreasingly let's say decreasingly important so people don't really care and we have one of our clients is aliexpress aliexpress is a great example because people before thought that products manufactured in china were really low quality and that is no longer the case people don't 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 care anymore so the origin is not that important and the brand could be really important, but it depends on the nature of your activity and also it depends on the company. Because we work with some clients which are uh, which leverage their brand equity and they achieve great deal of success thanks to their brand. That is the case of some of the Spanish fashion brands like Mango and, and Inditex and also Nike. We talk about sporting goods. Those are some examples of clients that I worked with before. But then for me, what is more important is that currently, lately, in, in the last years, there is some companies which are trading with goods with no recognizable brand, no, no brand awareness at all, and they are managing mm -hmm. to build a very profitable business because they are able to offer a value proposition that is really great in terms of value for the money. So I, I think I included the logos before. There is some uh, home and garden furniture companies in Spain. Also in Catalonia, there is um, there is Fecotec, which is an equip, uh, equipment home appliances business. They didn't have a brand before, and they have managed to build super successful, super successful businesses over the past four or five years. So in my opinion, most important thing is brand, of course, because I don't think origin is that important unless you're dealing with luxury goods where always the the brand equity is super important but for the rest origin is not that important brand is important but do not let that discourage you because there is a lot of companies with no brand equity building uh, uh, profitable businesses and it depends also in the popularity of the brand for sure of, of uh -huh. course the brand awareness is always uh, a growth driver, but uh, it doesn't have to be the case for you. <laughs> Teresa Figueiras is asking, regarding the e-commerce, what does your experience tell us about the food sector? 
not only wine, but also delicacies, non-frozen or fresh? Yeah, the, thank you. Thank you for the question, Teresa. This is super interesting because actually when we look at, uh, at, at food and drinks, we see that during COVID crisis, no category of retail has grown faster than this one. So this is the category that most people are engaging now with that weren't engaging before. That is, I think this is a great opportunity. And for instance, I know that in Spain, Carrefour is already uh, tapping on this opportunity because there is great, great underlying demand for this. Uh, normally, what we see at Google is that uh, this type of business customers in this spectrum weren't willing to shop online as much as other categories, uh, food and drinks before. But now they got used to it. They got used to it with COVID. So this is a great opportunity for you to market your product because I think that the customer, you are already in the mind of the customer and the habits, the purchase habits have changed during the last mm -hmm. six months. So it is a great opportunity for you. Okay. So, Patron, I think we're running out of time, but we will still have time for the last two or three questions. Uh, Nazir Madatali asks, one of the areas you, we want to advertise, it's not so searched in the internet, but throughout direct contact. Uh, we did a search to understand which customers in, re, in which countries who um, uh, search for our service, but there was not a demand for the words we wanted to advertise and not similar ones. What do you suggest <laughs> to deal with this? Yeah, so I, I, I'm not sure I understand the question, but Nazir, if this is the case, you'll probably have to change your industry. I don't think this is the case. I'm just joking. But uh, what you have to think is that I don't know what tool did you use for this, but probably you use Google Trends. And Google Trends is not as accurate as, as the tools that we use internally. If you think that there is demand for this, uh, mm -hmm. you, you'll probably have to work with your keywords, the keywords that you are using, because you need to understand how do people search online for the products that you sell, which is not necessarily the terms mm -hmm. that you are using already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm looking at the questions here, but uh, so which is the best. <laughs> A brief tool question to from Joana Fernandes. Uh, very specific question: Which is the best tool tool to increase the sale of books? in international market. Do you have any idea about that? Mm, we don't have that many clients in the book industry now because there is a super powerful player there, which as you know, is Amazon. But uh, I think it greatly depends on the type of books that you're selling. Because mm. if it's a niche, uh, it is there. There is opportunity for you. Otherwise, I think the market is too crowded. It's too too crowded, and the competition is fierce. So, um, I don't know. I I I I I wouldn't like to answer because I, I really don't know what. We don't have that information sorry, right sorry, now. Sorry, Jana. But, yeah. <laughs> but the 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 last question is about one thing you talked about about translation and the importance of ev um, uh, everything available in different languages, uh, especially the language of the markets you want to reach. Uh, mm. Antonio Balsamontero asks, when possible, I believe that the best solution in to offer uh, or our own website is to offer our website in several languages, in spite mm. uh, to use Google. Do you agree? In in, in spite, what does it mean? In spite, so different different tool, not not Google tool, or or what does it mean? Not, in... not Google tool. Uh, website translated in the different all the different languages you want to reach. Well, uh, what I think is that the Google tool, I, I'm not aware, and not because I work at Google, but I'm not aware of any other tool that has the power that Google has when it comes to translating. And that is because Google invests heavily in artificial intelligence translation. So the Google Translate API is a really powerful tool. But if you are not up to machine, it depends. If you are up to machine translation, 
Mm, I think Google is the go-to resource. Otherwise, you can go to human translation providers, and there is many. For instance, there is one called Glo Global. I'll, I'll, I'll write it here. Global. Mm -hmm. Those, that, that is one of the providers that you can use and they can provide translations for you. The only thing is that uh, it is, of course, more costly and, and less scalable because you have to do it for every single market that you want to translate your content to. Okay. Uh, another question regarding uh, Monique Mendonça is asking regarding engineering services and real estate, should we use the same tools as for retail selling? Um, well, probably not, because uh, when we are talking about retail, we are mainly talking about e-commerce, so transactional platforms kind of allow customers to purchase directly from the website. And if we are talking about engineering service and real estate, it seems like we are talking more about consultative sales, so longer process of sale and uh, human interaction, much more important, probably. So people who who buy a house or or a turnkey project would like to speak to the project manager. So what you can do, what I would advise you to do, is still be online because that's the way to target a much wider market, right? So in order to outstand your competition, you have to be online, have a responsive website, have it have it translated in as many languages as market you want to target. So that is that is important, and you can always you you do not necessarily need to do uh, online advertising, but you, you can always do that in order to to highlight your value proposition over your competitors. I would say yes, be online. You do not need to set up an e-commerce store because it's not relevant for you. But yes, be online. Uh, thank you, Beltran. I think we're running out of time. Uh, I just would like to thank you for your uh, very um, informative uh, presentation. Uh, and if you don't mind, uh, I, and for your answers, of course. And if you don't mind, I'll just finish with some words, some few words in Portuguese. Uh, obrigada a todos os participantes pela vossa participação. Uh, a ICEP vai continuar a organizar webinars sobre diversos temas, diversos setores e mercados. Este é o primeiro webinar organizado em colaboração, em conjunto com a Google. Uh, já na próxima quinta-feira vamos ter, no dia 17, um webinar Prepare-se para se tornar global também com a Google. E, e no dia 21 promover o comércio eletrónico e chegar a clientes de, de todo o mundo. Ainda esta semana uh, vamos também ter um webinar dedicado ao setor da moda na Suécia. Uh, no dia 18, e, e na próxima semana uma sessão sobre o setor da construção no Reino Unido. Uh, esperando que vos tenha sido útil, uh, continuem a acompanhar-nos em portugalesporta.pt. Um bom dia e uma boa semana.